Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for this AccuStats video productions of the Living Legends Challenge. And thank you all for coming out tonight. We're coming to you live here from Sandcastle Billiards in the Aramith Simonis Arena in Edison, New Jersey. As always, a very entertaining event. We currently stand at day two, session two, continuing with one pocket. The overall score, 5-1 in favor of Mr. Strickland and Mr. Siegel now coming back to make another point in stand today with some more one pocket. Took down the last match, got on the board, and looking to do some more damage. So without further ado, let me bring these two champions back to the table. The official referee for our match, as always, Handsome Ransom, Mr. Carswell Ransom, will be doing his duties and serving. And first off, we will bring up Captain Hook, three-time U.S. Open nine ball champion, 14.1 U.S. Open champion, Hall of Famer, the list goes on and on. Captain Hook, Mr. Mike Siegel. Welcome again. And of course, his opponent, Five-time U.S. Open nine-ball champion, coming off of a fresh win from Germany in the German Pool Masters, also Hall of Famer, it's Earl the Pearl Strickland. Good luck, gentlemen. Shoot well. At this time, I'd like to send it over to the booth with our commentators, Mr. Bill Hendrickson and John Bender. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ed Ladawi. There's the owner of, of Sandcastle Billiards, who's been a wonderful host to this event. I'm John Bender of John Bender Cues, along with Bill Hendrickson in the AccuStats booth. And <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike's talking to us. Um, well, he won the wag, and he's yeah. very happy about how used the, the first break was last set he played. Yeah, and he's hoping it's going to repeat. That guy. Yeah, Mike, Mike did well in the one pocket. Um, he's, he's, the players have microphones on, and we will you will often hear Bill and I stop when the players start speaking so that you can listen to their own commentary of what's going on. So he, he, that's the main thing. He's got to get a good rack. If he doesn't get a good rack, you can't hit those balls. The corner ball comes flying right out, and you'll sell out. Yeah. That's the only advantage I could see for going to the AccuRack. For one pocket. Yeah, or for, yeah, one for pocket. this. Yeah, yeah. for rack. I, I, want them all, I want them all touching. <laughs> Carswell forgot to give Mike the uh, cue ball. Yeah, okay, right. now that we've gotten that straight. Now. <laughs> Hard to start the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Banks for him to come back with. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I might go to three. You know, I might go three reels around the table and then try to hit the uh, long reel before the four ball. You know what I mean? Send the cue mm -hmm. around the table, three reels, and try to hit, hit, you know, miss the pocket and hit the four ball. I see. But that would be a tremendous uh, position change. There's other things. Yeah. A lot of players just drive a ball to the rail, you know. But sure. Oh, he's looks like he's going to try to go off the one and send the cue ball up. There oh, we man. go. It's, it's an okay move. Mm -hmm. he, he left him the two ball. You see that? And he's going to be able to put the two ball into something. Put the two ball into play, certainly, yeah, 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 to yeah, Mike's side of the table. Either you leave the cue ball on top of the rack or you, or you force follow it forward. But he'll get the, either the three or five going towards his pocket or the 11. Something's going to go towards his pocket. He's just yeah, debating. For those of you just tuning in, Mike won the first um, break, winning the lag, and he broke so that his pocket is the bottom right pocket on your viewing screen, and Earl is shooting for the left. Let me see what happened here. He, he didn't pay attention to the four ball, and he left that uh, opportunity for Mike to push the ball up right in yeah. front of the pocket. Now he's really got a problem because... Yeah, Earl's really on the defensive yeah. now. He oh, has no he's, choice. He's really got to—he's got to try to make this four ball. If he doesn't make it, he's got to take it out somehow. He doesn't want to scratch it in the pocket. He's going to go up and down and kick it the four ball. Uh, we'll see what happens. Is that the four out of five? The four. That's right? the four ball. Yeah. yeah. Four to five under the lights look very similar to me.
We've played uh, six disciplines of this event, have been eight ball, 10 ball, 14, one straight pull, nine ball, banks and one pocket. Earl won the first five um, disciplines of eight ball through banks and then Mike won the one pocket. If, if the 15 wasn't on the long rail, he would be able to leave him long. And uh, as he cut the four in, it would, the cue would go into the two and he wouldn't be able to get another ball. The, the reason we're, we're playing a second round of uh, one pocket at this time is the player who had the least number of wins after the first six disciplines has the right to choose the uh, the next discipline to be played. Now, Mike has chosen one pocket for this one, and that's the last time he can choose that. He can choose any of the other five disciplines, for, you know, in the next round, and, you know, presuming that... Um, he can, you know, isn't the one, the leading player. Um, he gets to choose each discipline from, you know, today, tomorrow's uh, two events at one, and then the next two at seven tomorrow. So he's looking at the three ball, but you know, the cue ball is going to hit the five after the three. It may go right in the corner pocket. I don't know. I'd cut the five instead of the three. We'll see what he does. Yeah, he's getting, I think he's thinking twice about it. You see, he's aiming the three over mm -hmm. to the four. No, he, he's got to follow because he's on the rail. I mean, uh, yeah, he's going to be very, uh, very um, aware of where the cue ball is going to go after yeah, it contacts you know, the five. If he hits it soft enough, I guess it's okay. But uh, if he hits it too hard and follows through that five ball, it'll go right into the corner. Close. Made it anyway. He made it anyway. <laughs> well, that's a good shot. You see what happened to the five yeah. on the way up table? He did well. Yeah, he hit the five pretty square in the face at that point. Yeah, he did well. Now, he doesn't even have to make this ball, although it would be nice to make it, but, if, you know, if he, he can just send it over there and hide the stack, you know, hide it behind the stack. He's going for the, for the sink. Yeah, he, yeah, wants he, to, for it. yeah. he wants to make things happen. He could possibly run right out here. This table is, is generous for one pocket, and he has the opportunity to run out or to run a lot of balls and put Earl in the up, stream defensive. And, and uh, maybe draw into the seven now and hope for the uh, three ball. He's going to mm -hmm. shoot the two and... You know, looking for the three ball. And he should be able to execute this, but he can't reach it. He's using the bridge. I know where I want to go. Mm. This is going to miss. Don't hit the three ball. It'll be fine. I think it's perfect. Except that he's left-handed, so it's a long stretch for him to be able to reach. Well, he shoots a fairly well righty, too, mm -hmm. so let's see if he wants to shoot this ball right-handed and, and uh, possibly uh, shoot the eight next. He might be able to draw thin off of it and then hit the six. I don't know. I can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wishes he got a little bit more off of that last shot. Yeah, he's... <laughs> oh, you heard his decision. Shot to 15. And he's got a shot. Yeah. He got a nice stroke on that ball. Well, he's pocketed four balls so far in this first game of the rematch of one pocket. Eight points wins the game, three games wins the set. Uh, I'd be afraid to shoot this 15 ball. If he shoots to 15, it's a good shot. Maybe he could make it. But uh, with the cue ball, he has to hit it thin. Cue ball's going to go back and forth. Maybe mm -hmm. he has a chance to scratch somewhere. I don't know. He's going to use right English on it and try to come low. 
I think he's going to hit it middle ball and cinch the shot and let the cue ball go back and forth. Well, Maybe. That's, that's what I'm afraid of. It might double bank the cue mm -hmm. ball and I'll scratch over here on the right bottom side. Where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. on the right bottom side. Comes, you got to be soft. Yeah. See, so heading for the pocket. He, he sure was. The perfect speed. Any faster than that, he would have been up near the pocket. So that's a good five balls for Mike. He's just taking a ball out here. I would take at least one out here. And he's put Earl back on the defensive. Yeah, and, he, and he's got the two balls on his side of the table, mm -hmm. the nine ball and the six ball. That's pretty good positioning. Earl takes one of them out. He's got to defend that six ball. He doesn't want Earl to be able to see the six ball now. Because then he won't have anything on his side, you know? Right. Mike won't have anything on the right side of the table. That's correct. And that was, wasn't a bad deal. Uh, I don't know if he could see the six. No, he, yeah, he can see the six from here. So Mike's probably going to send this cue ball up to the top here. Yeah, but then he's got to be careful of the, um, yeah. is it the 13 ball down here? Mike, sure. can, Mike can see that. Well, he a... wants a follow-up pass at the 7 so he can't see it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if he does it, you know, well. There's a lot to consider playing this game. Yeah. I mean, he could, either, he could even make the 6 in the corner. It wouldn't hurt him. But the cue ball has to go close to the top of the table. Mm hmm He's left Mike a, he left him a bank on the fair 13, opportunity you know, on the bank. You know, fair he, opportunity. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a gamble. Mm -hmm. you know, all the balls are runnable into Earl's pocket. Yeah. The whole table can be run into Earl's pocket. Yeah, the if six isn't this the shot. Bank and sell out, boy, I don't know. Yeah. The six isn't the shot at this time, but the... Well, even the 13 may not be. You might no. want to just take the 13 out. Yeah. You know, just three reel it out of there and put the cue on the bottom. I mean, that's what I would want to do. Sure. You just to, just you take know, it out of there. Keep, keep the cue ball. Cue underneath the, the, the uh, 12 or whatever that ball was. I think it's the 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep the cue ball under control and just do it. And he might be shooting the 10 ball, but that's in the middle. I wouldn't yeah. go for that one. That's the closest thing he has to his side. There, that's what I would do right there. So there's no real banks. You know, the, the, uh, the, well, the, up, the long table banks are all being uh, covered. The yeah. five blocks, the you know, one of them. The, the one blocks another one. Uh, you know, I don't see a, a great opportunity to make a mm -hmm. long table back. Now he can make a bank combination and put the cue ball on the right long rail, like, like that. If you don't come across very far. Yeah, what's happening now is is yeah, Mike is move there. Is, is Mike is really forcing Earl to create something, and Mike's just trying to keep everything under control. So he, Mike can be much more conservative than Earl and, and still be in yeah. control of this game. He's just trying to bank the, the 12 up and then get under the, the 14 ball somehow. There, he took it out. In fact, that's even better. That's even better. You've got two problems solved at one, one shot. My theory is this: If you take and hit one ball on my side, and I hit two on your, you hit you know two on your side, and I hit one on mine, and you hit two on yours, I hit one on mine. At the end of the day, you're going to end up with all the balls on your side. Sure. So it's it's better to move two balls at one turn. Oh, got contact. A kiss. Got a kiss. Oh, and Mike got a real break here. He can see that ball on the spot. And he may go for position on a 12 or a 1 here. It's because it's laying natural. Yeah, there's no question. That's a cool. huge break. Mike needs three, and those are the three. He didn't try for it. He just nope. made the shot. He might be able to shoot the 7 ball. I mean, the... Uh, no, he can't shoot the seven ball. I was going to say because no. the one and the twelve. The, the, the one and the twelve are rough. But if he goes up to the top, of the, he'll cut the nine or the five down the rail. The, the, the five down the rail. Sure. So he, he's got to take some balls off of uh, 
off of uh, Earl's side. Yeah. Maybe the 12 ball. Yeah, he might can be conservative here and still stay in control. Sure, and sure. Earl still has to make something happen, which is a good position to be in for Mike. Uh, you know, he has a, a really nice shot here. He can move uh, the eight, the five, the nine. I mean, he's going to chance it. Okay. No, he's not in love with it. The only, you know, advantage is if he can draw the cue ball over to right where his hand is there, see where he's looking. If he can bank the seven and get the cue ball below the eight and keep it there close to the rail, he's in good shape. That's a good idea. You're right. That is a good idea. That's a nice shot. And not that hard to do. Yeah. He's got a good angle on the seven to, to create this. Yeah. And plus, if he makes it, he gets the one. Mm-hmm. Oh. Little strong. Well, the, the seven is a possible bank, but it's really hard. Very I, risky. I don't even know if you're going to make it or not. Yeah. Might not even be possible. Especially that close to the rail, yeah. it's very uh, difficult to. He has a combination he could shoot here. And if he hits it hard, the one will go across and back to his pocket. If he makes it, he might have the one to shoot at next. Oh, the one ball would have come back, but you see how he hit the seven and stopped mm -hmm. it. Okay, Mike is in the driver's seat again. He needs two in this first game. Race to three, one pocket. He's just got to make this ball. Yeah. No other choice. There we go. Mr. Siegel wins the match. Good for match no, no, he, 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 he wins the first game. <laughs> the score of well, eight. the last match. <laughs> yeah. He won the last match this way, and the um, last match went back and forth um, with the break. The, the breaking uh, player won. Every breaking player chose the bottom right corner, and each time the player broke, they won their game. So I'm John Bender in the AccuStats booth, along with Bill Hendrickson. You're watching the Saturday evening portion of the Living Legends Challenge coming to you live from Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey in the Aram Simonis Arena. I actually liked the shot that Earl shot for his last yes. shot that last game. If he would have cut it a little more, mm -hmm. the ball would have had a chance to go in. He wouldn't hit the seven with the one ball. Yeah. But he didn't. And no. Mike took the game down. But it was a good opportunity. Yeah. This was a very nice break. Mike stayed, you know, in control the whole time. He played good conservative shots. He yeah. made shots when he needed to. He played good safeties when he had to. And Earl was pushing. He, Earl had to make something happen. It didn't. And once again, <laughs> the breaking player has chosen to um, take the lower right pocket. Yeah. So Mike is playing to the left pocket, Earl to the right this time. Now he doesn't have to get under this 10 ball. If he could get there, that's great, you know. I mean, he can also freeze to the top of the stack here. Let's shoot to the 8 and to the 7 and, and, you know, freeze to the 15 ball. Those are temporary, I mm -hmm. call them temporary solutions, you know, because it's not going to last for long. I mean, they're, frankly, they're temporary problems, too, but... Yeah. Good cue ball. Look at this. Wow. Look at this cue ball. He got a little brush off another ball, but he was going to be good anyway. He was The speed was yeah. right. He forced followed through the shot, and he took two balls out of there. And he had to do something. He had to make that happen. That was a very smart idea. <laughs> he did a lot of things right there. He sure did. You know, winning the match in the first game of this, winning the last match in the first game of this match has really loosened Mike up a little bit. He sees. Earl's going to try to get behind the five ball, freeze to the back of it here. That'd be a really excellent execution if he can do it. Look at this. That's as good as you guys for it. He hit that ball perfectly. Mm -hmm. And now what does poor Mike got to do? He's got to try to get over here. Almost almost has to take a foul to get there. Over to the uh, right uh, side the, of the, the table. The bottom right-hand side. Yeah, he's got to get to the pocket, bottom right. Where his opponent's pocket is. Yeah. He has to get down on the bottom there. He can't shoot the he can't shoot the 14 ball. <laughs> I think I would I would just take a, a foul, you know. A foul's an opportunity. Well, listen, he, he was put there 
because it was a good spot, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a fellow right there and see what happens. And see keep what, it there. See yeah. what, it, what Earl does, you know. That's one chance to do. Let's see if Earl didn't like mm -hmm. it. Maybe Earl won't want to shoot either. Maybe Earl would rather graze a ball and get him out of this problem. So give your opponent a chance to fuck yeah, up. Oh, excuse my language. <laughs> to make a mistake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and once again, <laughs> sorry, folks. Accustat apologizes for the live uh, <laughs> broadcast. Sometimes there are. <laughs> Mike is. Mike is laughing. Yeah, he can take but a anyway. zigzag. He can take a zigzag foul, but when he does that, he's going to give up the 14 I bank. No idea what to do. Here. Yeah. See. Yes, he has an idea. He's just. just he's just taking just time to evaluate. Yeah. Touch the cue. We'll leave it right there. See what happens. I think he's yeah. going to zigzag and try to touch the 10 down here on the bottom. He's going to come yeah, in just the across 14, the front of the yeah, 12. The 14 is going to be loom large here. Watch. Did he go left? Oh, maybe he did well. Yeah. Maybe he did well. But you can't see the 14. That was a really good speed control. Yeah. I don't think I could have had the, uh, the, uh, the touch to do that. That was an excellent touch. Yeah, that puts Mike in the hole for one. So the next ball that he pockets will get spotted at the end of his turn. Well, if so he makes his bank. True, but I'm just saying in, in this, this situation, what happens, you know, Mike fouled, so he owes a ball, so he now needs to get to nine to win the game. He made it. Good shot. Yeah, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, so he's, he should be have a good chance to run out. Does he owe it? Well, he doesn't know it. He has a good chance to run out here. With the six, 10, the 11, and then when you move the 11 out of the way, the eight and the seven seem to go after that. Yeah. You could, you could, go, you could go six, you could go 10, 11, 14, or 10, 11, seven, eight. Well, depending on the He's angle you get, but the 11 has got to be the next ball. He has choices here. I'll go for the 14 first after the 11. And the 14 will get you to the 7 8, right? Probably. It certainly works. A little hard, but it's doable. So Earl has five now. He needs eight to win the game. Looks like six. Excellent shot. The eight will fit by the seven, but it's not a full pocket. It's yeah. Most of the pocket. Seven is the next best shot. There we go. And he's got an angle. And he needs one, and that's it. If he needs more, he could probably get him because he's got an angle sure. to break him. I hope, he does, I hope he knows his score here. I'm surprised he hasn't asked. What if he tries to do something here and, and, and ends up losing? Did he try yeah. to break him open? He didn't know yeah. he won. If he skinned off the pack mm -hmm. and scratch, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> that would have been a big difference. Yeah. So, so it's 1-1, one, one. Um, just like the uh, last session. Yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> Mike's asking what to do with the five. I still got to do that. I was going to touch it. Maybe he goes like that. Him. Yeah. Okay, so we have a 1-1 one, one tie. Mike is breaking again, and he's obviously going to be selecting as each breaker has the lower right pocket. Got to hope you don't make the four. What am I going to do? I'm dead there. I mean, I did a good shot on the break. The, no, I made a good shot to, to do what I did. And then, you know, if it don't lay right on the five, I can get out of that. Yeah, he made a nice shot when he made that zigzag safe, that scratch mm -hmm. he took. I would have taken the touch, I would have just touched the cue ball first. Sure. Now, if Earl touches it back, Earl got to run nine, not eight. Sure. Now I might touch it a second time, or I might go zigzag, and you know, it depends. Yeah. Like what he did, his shot was great, you know. 
But at least he has yeah. to make the extra ball. You know, maybe he wouldn't have got the last ball there, and you might have been still alive. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a remote mm -hmm. chance, but it's something better than nothing to do, you know. He was in trouble. Yeah. The guy made a great shot. Earl made a great shot. Yeah. Yes. Great shot. And he made a great shot back, believe it or not. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> He's and hims and thems and those. It's hard to know. That's like the worst break I did. Not bad, though. No. I don't know if he could see the three. If he could see the three, he could possibly two rail the three and draw into the two, and maybe the three will hit the stack and create some havoc over there. You know, I don't know. Uh, it looks like he's just going to try and not, pop not the three out and leave the cue ball there. It. Yeah. So he did get some balls on his side. That was good. Mm -hmm. Lost the cue ball a little bit, so it's not as strong as it could have been. But, uh, yeah, he just overcut the three a little. Yeah. He didn't hit it square like he expected. No, I'm, I'm going to hit the back of this four ball if it's me shoot, but it's not. So let's see what he does. He's going to take one out of there and get behind the four ball. So. He's going to go to the same place I want to go to, but he's going to try to move an extra ball at the same time, yeah. which will probably succeed, but mm -hmm. it's a, a more difficult thing than what I want to do. Mine was easier, but it didn't accomplish as much. I don't, I don't want to leak this out and give him the, the four by accident. God darn it. So he did. He almost yeah. did. He? Mm, it's <laughs> Knowing Earl, he might have. He might have gave him the ball. See, if he hit the back of it, he couldn't have gave it up. Sure. But he took the chance of moving more balls, which he needed to do. You know, he, they're both good. Mm -hmm. When you hit it bad, you hit it bad. Both ideas were good, that is what I'm getting at. Sure. Uh, one is a carry a little more risk. One pocket, that's like a touchy shot. If I get him on the four, he's dead. Yeah, see what he said? Yeah. He's saying pretty much what I said. Sure. He's got the 11 ball. He's looking for a next shot. I don't know how straight he is. He's got a little yeah. angle, but not much. So he's in the bank. He he certainly is. The 15 ball, maybe, right? Yeah, I played perfectly to get there. Now does this ball bank? Mm-hmm. Pretty much stop shot bank. There it is. Right in the hole. It was easy, too. It was easier than I thought. This is the first opportunity any players had to break the serve of their opponent. Um, we've seen a pretty clear um, dominance of the breaking player. Mike made a mistake, and Earl has a chance to break his serve. Uh, he can either go up for the seven ball here. Yeah, that looks like what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little further yeah. than he wanted to get. But he's okay. He can he's cross okay. this bank yeah. a little bit. And, and, uh, if, as long as he... Uh, Maybe he could get the seven ball near his pocket or mm -hmm. in the pocket, and hopefully the cue ball will be on the other side of the stack. Sure. Well, he didn't hit it hard enough to get it on the other side of the stack, but he... Now, this is the same situation as he had before. You know, you, you want to just hit the back of the ball same here. Yeah. that Mike had before. Yeah, you just want okay. to hit the back of the seven. You hit the reel and then the seven. Mm -hmm. To take it away from the pocket. He has no shot coming back. You don't have to move it a lot. You can move it six inches, a foot, whatever. You don't have to bring it all the way out. Just get it away from the, the object yeah, ball, away yeah, from the pocket, yeah. and keep the cue ball there. Make it so it's not a threat anymore. Right now, it's a sure. threat. Can't go. That's the problem. You know, the one's in the way of the three bank. He was thinking about playing a three bank and mm -hmm. then sending the cue ball three rails around, but it's no good. If the one wasn't there, he could play for the, for the two or the seven, or the ten next. Three rails with the cue ball. Now he's, he's pretty much stuck here. You can hit the back of the seven, or you can make the seven real soft. And what's he going to do if you make it? He's going to have one extra ball, so what? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this too much. Well, he could hit it real good, maybe, you know? 
Mike can definitely hit it good. Just at this time. Get on the rail, Mike. And he didn't do a bad job here. Look at this. The cue ball mm -hmm. he hit it on the inside of the one ball, which is nice. It's a threat. Uh, sure. See? Earl's going to shoot something here, I'm sure. Either the five or the seven. I don't know which. Well, you can play rail first. I'll notice the seven ball in the bottom left corner. Yeah, and come up for the five or come sure. up for the cross and the three, right? Mm -hmm. He went defensively. He sure wow. did. I'm surprised at Earl. Usually he likes yeah. to go offense, right? And he lost control. He didn't put the cue up. Well, didn't put the cue down quite enough to block his, the seven ball there on the bottom left. He has a lot of choices here. Uh, he, he can, you know, you don't want to give him the three ball bank, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he can make the ten. He can make the ten and leave the cue ball on the top rail. You know, bank the ten and leave the cue ball up on the top rail. Yeah. And then maybe he'll shoot the seven. Maybe he won't be able to see it. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, if it doesn't go, he'll have it near his pocket. Is it pocket speed? Ah. So he's got a lot of threats over there. Now yeah. Earl has his shot out of the seven. Yeah. Uh, or he could take the ten out, just drew, double bank the ten and draw it out of there. Yeah, this this is a good shot for Earl to, to pocket the seven, though. Trying to control the cue ball. I mean, he's he's trying to think of something smarter. The seven's good. A lot of players would shoot this. Mm -hmm. top, all the top players in the world might shoot the seven. But he's trying to think of something smarter, you know? If you control the cue ball real well and shoot the ten, you might be able to put it behind it, too. Made a nice shot. Now, if he has the five, it wouldn't be a bad idea, but... It's not the end of the world if you bank the three. The cue ball hit the ten. I don't think it scratches, do you? Hmm. I think it's the ten too full to scratch, but it depends on how he hits it, Yeah, of it course. depends on how he hits it. The ten is out a little. Assuming he hits it good enough to make it, I, yeah. I think he doesn't scratch, but we'll see. So you're some. listening to, to John Bender and Bill Hendrickson in the Accustats booth here at the Aramith Samaras Arena. This is the evening session of the Le Living Legends Challenge. Oh, that's a nice shot. Look at this. Yeah. He just took the ball out of there. That's a good shot. Yeah. Very good. He was afraid Frost he was protecting scratch, that big yeah. lead. Yeah, he was yeah. afraid he was going to scratch, so he didn't want to do that. Yeah, 10 was in a prickly position for that shot. If it wasn't there. on this table? This goes. You see, he's, he's getting away from his style, and he wants to yeah. make something happen, but it's, it's a really tough shot. This is a hard shot. If he kisses, he might lose a game. Mm -hmm. He can see the three, I think. But it's, if he can see even just the edge of the three, he can knock it up towards the five and freeze to the freeze to the rail. Eight, yeah. He's got to be no, careful. Oh, eight. I see. Bring it back. Bring the cue ball back into yeah, the center of the it. table. It'll be natural to come back to the, to the to against the, the eight or the fourteen. Yeah. He's going for the shot here. Boy, this is a tough one. Well, the 10 ball helps. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Earl's got this two ball bank. He could draw up into the one and really not give much away, you know? Yeah. And if he draws up into the one and, and makes the two, he's got the eight. That's correct. And you don't have to draw. You could just no. follow the, the bank and play for the five next and, sure. and maybe run out if you make it. Well, he needs three. And there is one. There's the five. Certainly has the five, followed by the three. If This is pretty much a free shot because yeah. uh, there's no balls that go in Mike's pocket. He has a little bit of, of angle. Yeah. Does he need it? Oh, he has the 
eight bank on well, the geometer. That's eight. Wow. That is eight, and that's the first time we've seen the breaking player lose. Ah, that fucking shot cost me that, that four ball. Couldn't get behind the four. I don't believe it. Play to scratch, and when you play one pocket, you got to finesse that shot and just barely miss scratch and stick him on the ball. That's it. you got. You know, that's a different stroke. I just. I'm too afraid to go. I didn't even have to hit it that hard. I could have just could have coasted to the rail anyway. I just sold out the game. Then that shot, I thought that might kiss off the 10 or even bank right in. That didn't even grab. That didn't do anything what I thought it would do. And Earl will be breaking game four. Yeah, uh, see what happened. Mike uh, went for that shot, and it opened up the, the yeah. rack. Oh, he got lucky on this break. Look at this. Yeah. He uh, had a really bad hit, and he got away with it. Two people goes two rails and freezes to the stack. Wow. He's going to have to take a scratcher somehow. This event, or excuse me, in this discipline of one pocket, three games wins the match. So Earl is on the hill. You know, it's, it's, it's good to take scratches when the ball's all down here because... These are both great ball runners. What's the difference if he has to run eight or nine? Not much yeah. difference, you know? Um, so take a scratch now. You know, that's it's easy to do. Now, if you get near the end of the game and you need one to win, I'm not taking too many scratches there. I don't want to get out of the one hole. I sure. need one ball to win. I'm going to stick and stay there if I have to, if I can. If you can. But he's, he's got the post. To, you could just stop right there and take a scratch. You get under the, the three ball maybe in in or against the three where he can't cut the two or cut the three. Mm -hmm. Or he could take a, a foul, go to the long rail where he's standing, hit that rail, and then come across and, and uh, don't reach the pocket and, you know, come close to two ball so it won't, uh, can't be cut in. Now, you understand what I'm saying? I do. I'm getting confused, but I get it. Yeah, he's going to... Yeah, no, I understand. He's going to have to stand on the right there's, side there's, of the table yeah. and send the uh, cue ball under the rack between the three and eleven and down low enough so the two can't be cut in and lose a ball. Now, this, of course, he could maybe stick to the stack or something like that, but that's temporary. You know, he, he, could, he could draw and freeze the six, yeah. but then, then still, he's got all those balls over there. He's got to solve his problem soon. Well, fortunately, there's no time clock, and yeah. Mike is going to take his, ti his time, and he's going to make a decision after he evaluates everything that's in front of him. You can't go up and down because the one's blocking it all. Yeah, what know? we know is he's not shooting the five ball. Yeah. I'm going to make that prediction. <laughs> sorry. That's, a, that's not a sorry. That's an accurate <laughs> I'm statement. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> what a hit this was. Wow. That was a great shot. There we go. That deserves a standing ovation. Yeah. What a shot under pressure that was. Long in the agony. <laughs> that was no, that was a great shot, and it might have stopped, stopped you from having any agony. Yeah. Three great players came up, come up with great shots. Well, he's going to try and take a foul, go above the stack, up top. No, he didn't no foul. That. No necessary. Yeah. No foul necessary. Now what's happening here now with that shot? Huh? So that means what, what again? I right, forget it. No, you just. No, he can't push it. If you, if you. Huh? Uh, I, if it don't move that far, right? Yeah, you, you ain't gonna take that chance on that one. Well, if, if the scratch is just a foul, correct? Yes, right. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't want. You lose a ball. Huh? If you foul the cue ball, you lose a ball. Yeah, I lose a ball. Yeah, but okay. I mean, if I hit it and the cue ball only goes to like near the two, then it, that's a good shot, right? Yes. Okay. They're trying to determine what will be considered a push versus a, a, a yeah. legal hit. Yeah, he thinks he, he, thinks he can yeah. stop the cue ball and send the cue ball near the, the two mm -hmm. near the three. Sure. That's all he wants to do is tap it away. I think there's other ways to do the exact same thing, accomplish the same yeah. thing. That's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. He can also hit this long rail on the right side here on the bottom right and kick the two back down towards the three, right? Yes. Yeah, starting. For, Mike would stand on the left side of the table and, and play rail first, hit correct, the two, and, and push it across. Correct. That would be another way yeah. to play. He can also play in, shoot into the uh, 
what's that, the 15 or the 14, mm -hmm. and drill back behind it. Sure. That's a... Yeah, that would be a foul, I believe. So he said a good stroke. That's a good shot. What he said. There you go. So what is the ruling? Not a foul. Not a foul. Not a foul. Okay. Uh, it was within the realms of what they explained before he shot it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no sense in crying over spilled milk and getting worried about it, right? No. Uh, if Earl has the same situation, I'm sure he'll have the same call. He'll have the same latitude and the same sure. call. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, he got a ball yeah. on his side of the table. And he's got the cue ball pretty much tied up. Yeah. So if without a ball on your side of the table, it leaves too many places for your opponent to hit the cue ball yeah. and leave it. You know, you don't want him to, to be able to leave it anywhere you want. It, it could just mm -hmm. ruin you. Now, unlike straight pull, they're playing cue ball foul only here. I'm going to bring that up because they are all jacked up over the rack like that. Now, this is an interesting shot. You see that five ball? Yeah. He, he may be able to bank this five ball and draw off the, the 11 and freeze against the 14. See, sometimes mm -hmm. it lays for that where you can just hold a cue ball right up against the stack and get this five real close to the, to the pocket without being able to see it. I like to try to shot when I'm when I'm playing. I like to try to. Yeah, because you have a lot of blockers there in the, in yeah, the middle of yeah. the table you'd to hold to the cue ball in place. You'd have to go up. That's right. You'd have to go up real high to sell out the 15 or whatever yeah. it was. Now, on the other hand, he could just go off to five and come down and freeze to the two. Be very easy mm -hmm. to do. Or he could just kick at the two, hit the right bottom long rail where he's standing, hit that mm -hmm. with the cue ball, and then come and just tap the two ball over a little bit. Some people go to tap the two ball over a lot you know, on that shot. Right. They feel confident and they tap it a lot. It goes past the seven sometimes. He has a lot of options here to shoot. A lot of options here. <laughs> yeah, he just said it, that too. Yeah. Can he hear you? No, I, don't I know think that. So. I don't no, think no, so. no, no, he can't. We're in a soundproof booth. I, I imagine they can't hear me, but. We're on the same wavelength. He can read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a great cue ball. He might try right. to shot. His instincts are telling him. See, he did exactly yeah. what I said. See? That was a very good shot. Yeah, it was laying but, for it. You know, it was laying for it. Now, now Earl turned around, and he's got the problem here. Yeah. For the first time this game, Earl is on the real defensive because Mike played a great I shot there. I think I could make that. Earl has a chance maybe to kick the five in or, or, or to get behind it on the same rail, mm -hmm. you know, by kicking to the right side of the table on the long rail and coming and missing the uh, seven and hope he can hit the, the orange ball. But yeah. if he can't, there's other options for him to do. Yeah. He can leave him on that long rail uh, on the left side of the table. Yeah. What Mike unfortunately can't do right now is take a big chance because Earl is on the hill. He needs one game to win the match. Mike needs two. So Mike really obviously needs this game. And he needs to stay in complete control to Earl do has that. a problem right now. And you're right. That's absolutely right. But Mike does break next. Mm -hmm. if, if Mike wins this game, see, that was the place he could leave him, was on that long rail. Now, can he hit the 11? If he could hit the 11 and play the 11 15 bank, yeah. right? Uh, maybe he can score the five, I don't know. There's a hole between the six and the four. It may have a chance to go. He, he's looking at the, um, the eight ball. Is it uh, dead? Well, that's combination. Another, that's, yeah, that's a nice shot. But how you hit? How do you but hit? how do you get yeah. to it? That's what he was just looking at. You got to make the first ball first. You're watching live coverage of the Living Legends Challenge, brought to you by Accustat Productions. 
from Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, in the Aramith Simonis Arena. I'm John Bender with Bill Hendrickson in the booth. Yeah, we can't tell. Oh, see, I, no, he can't see the 11, but I don't know if he can see the 11 enough to stop it, you know? Mm hmm. So if you can see enough to stop it, then you might be able to hide behind a 14 ball if it does the right damage. Well, that's, that'll never hurt you. That'll never no. hurt you, that shot there. He's got him on the rail. It's going to make it very difficult to, to, to get over that long yeah. rail again without selling out the five. On the left long rail. On the long rail near the five. Okay. Where he just was. Mm -hmm. He pretty much has to get him on the long left rail, you know, where he just was again. If, if he doesn't do that, uh, Now he stopped. Well, I mean, it's a touch. It's a feel. Okay. Well, this was huh. not bad. Yeah. He can't really cut the five in, uh, but he has a lot of options again. He wants to get him back on that two ball again, if yeah. he could. He might graze the 13 ball and uh, get him on that two ball again that way. He might even be looking at this eight ball if it, if it does go, or if the you know the, the 14 eight goes, he may be able to make it from here. Cutting the six into it, you know? Sure. But I think he's gonna do what you said first. Can't get on the rail. God, if I just bank this in and win. Can't get on the rail. What you gotta do? Yeah, but just on the rail. And it's a big difference just between off the rail win. or froze on the rail. That's that was an easy shot. That was an easy shot. It, it, it deflected more than going through the ball, is what happened. If you could get behind the five ball, that would be that nice shot, too. You know, get the cue ball somehow behind the five or again on that long long left rail. How about a how about a two rail bank with the nine? Can he hit enough of that ball? Or the one? And still get the cue ball on the long left rail. He's gonna try and do a trick shot here. Maybe he's just making evaluations. Maybe. <clears throat> he might try to two wheel around the nine and force his cue ball to the left a little bit. He hit it great. What a great shot this was. Oh my God. He's, he's lucky he hit the, the 12 ball, or mm -hmm. Mike, Mike wouldn't have liked it. At least he has something to do here, you know? <coughs> There's a lot of options here. As there often is. Yeah, he can, he can even go up and down and kick up and down, you know? Long way. Tell you what, he moved a lot of balls and he changed the whole rack <laughs> and he left he left Earl in a really dangerous area. Yeah. Earl has a shot at a six, uh, the nine. The and, nine and ball, I yeah. I don't know for the life of me if I'd ever want to shoot that ball. <laughs> Uh, it looks like he could hit behind yeah. the seven or behind the five, but I don't know if he can or not. Well, he's going to. Oh, he didn't wow. scratch. Oh. Oh, 
if Mike had seen his 11 ball, he, he got a chance to bank this. He's got a lot of a lot of good things could happen. I think Mike could leave him in a, in a tough spot again. Much harder, though, with that nine ball out there and the one ball. Yeah, Mike's got to yeah, play it. And you want to know something? I wouldn't even play the ball. I'd play to put the cue ball near the right side pocket. Yeah. Off the 11 if I could. I don't even play the 11. I just play the cue ball where he can't get behind the seven and five again. Yeah. But we'll see. Maybe I'll go for the shot and get there anyway. Oh, we lost Whitey. Oh, we lost Whitey. Maybe I'll get lucky here. Maybe I'll get lucky here. No. No luck at all. All you do is hit it just kind of full. Or soft. Either it's full or soft. Yeah. If he did it softer, he would have been on a right long rail. No. Yeah, the, the speed that he hit it, though, it, yeah. it was the cut. He cut the, the ball incorrectly. Sure. So the cue ball never really scrubbed off any speed. I guess he could, he's going to draw around the two here. And uh, no, he looks like he's going to follow, but I, I would have. Get up to the one. Yeah. Oh, he didn't get there. Look at this. No. Hmm. No, they're both talking to you. Well, no. Earl's beside himself. He doesn't yeah. know how he did that. <laughs> he just had to move right at that time. Oh. So someone moved in the, in the stands. Well, you know, when you're playing great, that doesn't bother you. No. you know, when you're playing a little in, in between, it, it's, you're more sensitive to it. When you're playing great, the wall could fall down and you wouldn't yeah. know it. Yeah. In his prime, he would have never cared about that. Yeah. People used to take flashes, pictures, everything. He, after he run out, then he complained, you know. I just go up and down here. Mm -hmm. uh, I take the cue ball and I take the scratch up and down behind the seven. Well, that was a great shot there, but he, sure he, was. he, left, he left a, a 12 bank. He left a, mm -hmm. a seven bank. He, he gave a lot of options for for Mike to use. Okay, given the open table he had, to I'll come away from that with one ball only, really. It has to bother him. Earl expected to get a lot more out of that. And in his defense, you know, in Earl's defense, a little bit, the people who are sitting around the arena, generally speaking, have great manners and great understanding of what they're watching. But every once in a while, something happens that... We have the most educated crowd in the world. Sure. These people, a lot of them come and they see all the events and they see all the yeah. venues. And they're terrific. And they know the logic and the, and the yeah. strategy of all of them. And they're all players, they're, most of them, too. Yeah, they're players. They're great fans. They're very respectful. Oh, he had a little hole to hit that ball through. Well, the trick here is to get him where he can't see the seven and he can't get behind the five. So maybe he could go off the uh, 14 ball or the eight ball or something and get un under it and below the two. You know, I don't know what he can do. I have a little trick that I use. Uh, I might graze the... 15, is that the 15 ball next to the 8? Uh, yes. I graze that, and then I catch the 8 off the, off the kiss, and I have a little bit of right English, and it brings me straight to the side rail and under the 2 in most cases. And he did exactly what you were suggesting. Did he? And off the eight, did hit the, the rail on the right. He tried to get under the two yeah. ball, but he got okay. Did he hit both balls, by the way? I wasn't looking. Did he hit the 15 and the eight? Not, um, yes, yeah. yes, he did. So that's what, you know. And, and when it hit the side rail, did it come under the two and up again, or did it not get No, it far? didn't get under the two. It, it just he hit the hit side rail. Quite long and hard enough, maybe. Correct. Well, and not quite at a lot of spin either. He was relying much more on the speed control of, his, of the middle hit, so middle Earl, ball hit. Earl's got to shoot the seven ball here, and he's got to make something happen good for him. Off the seven. So he's going to bank this into the ten or something. 
and drew out a cue ball down under the five, hopefully, or next to the five. Just like that. See, you see what mm -hmm. happened now? He drove into the ball, and now he got, he has a ball in his pocket hanging. Now, he didn't plan that, I'm sure. But yeah. He planned on balls coming to his side. And that's the, that's the key there. If Mike could kick that eight in, it would be a great shot here. How many times if I get him here, he's dead. I keep, I, I can't get behind that ball. The other time when it was here, all I got to do is, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, come on. I stick him on that ball, it's like game over. He's got to make this eight ball somehow. That is a moral imperative in this game. Earl needs one game to win the match. He has one ball. And Mike is shooting. It's hard enough if it hits it. Yeah. What a great shot there. Great shot. Yeah. Now that was some shot from where he was. And tremendous was speed. Shots. Tremendous Why speed control. <laughs> <laughs> Carswell's trying to give, <laughs> give take a ball from yeah. Earl. <laughs> it's been a long day for Carswell. Yeah, he's he's a great yeah. professional, but even the best again. Yeah, that was just the game he was giving yeah. Earl the ball. Sure. And now uh, Earl has to perform again. You know, the, the mm -hmm. balls are looking good. For his position of balls are looking good for, for Mike. You know, he can come off the... Uh, seven or the 14 and uh, not sell out the five, but he may sell out a bank with the four or the one or the 14 or the seven or the two or something, you know? <laughs> you didn't all, mention the 10 balls. The only well, ball you didn't mention, well, that's all the way up the it, table. You know? we, don't, we don't know <laughs> what, what he's going to do. If yes. he hits it, you know, hits the one, then the other one is, 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 yeah. is exposed, you know? He doesn't want to let him see the two ball. That would be a real good bank to have, you know? Right. Because it goes into the three, and maybe the three will even get lucky and make the five, you know? That happens a lot, more than you would imagine, too. He's got to leave him on the left long rail again. <laughs> and I don't see how he's going to do that and not give him a, a, a bank back. Sometimes yeah. you can that, smash that was the a good shot. Out of Mike, Mike really played a great shot there. And um, you want to know what I do here? I would kick the ball, the cue ball, up and down on two reels. So go all the way up to the short reel at the top of the table, mm -hmm. back down, and hit the left long rail with the cue ball, and then try to hit the five. That's what I would try to do. If you take yeah, and the, the five, foul, the five is not frozen. So yeah, if, if, if he just frozen, taps it, yeah. But if you lose the ball, if you lose the ball, mm -hmm. I don't care. You could just spot the eight ball again. That's okay. Yeah. Well, he doesn't want to lose the ball, and he's going to give him some kind of a shot to do here. I don't know what. See? That, the only one you didn't mention was the ten ball, and that's the well, one he shot. Yeah, but he left him on the <laughs> wrong side of the, the, the yeah. pack. And yeah, Mike's he even him. saying that, so he wants to know why he left him on the wrong side of the stack. <laughs> it's a strategy move here. I don't know. <laughs> I got too many balls over there. <laughs> well, I got to shoot at something here. I mean, come on. I'm not going to just cut it over there. Let's see. I get over here. This looks like it can't miss here if I just roll into the four some kind of way, right? I mean, just hit over here somewhere. How can this go wrong? Get a little kissy-wissy. He wants to bet the game on the six ball, froze it to the real nine feet away. God bless him. Oh, what a shot this was. So, we, you know, he had the right angle and then hit the yeah. right side of the balls. Mm -hmm. But he's got everything going for him now. Look at this. I got too many balls in front of my hole. He's going <laughs> to shoot the three five right now, and that'll, that'll open everything up for him. Yeah. That's got to go. Kiss the 11, kiss the five. Up in this snap. I think it's got to go too, but I'm not sure. How can the five not go here? Hit the right one, hit the 11. Really kind of depends on how far the five ball is off the rail. Yeah, but he can even just draw with left English and not sell a deuce out, and it would sure. be a safe shot. So Worse, it'll happen, it'll have the balls closer to his pocket. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, sure he wants to run out if he could, but if you don't, you'll have balls close to your pocket. Uh, 
it went in. But see, he gave up nothing if it didn't go, mm -hmm. right? Well, you did a great shot. Mike is fighting for his life here. Earl needs one game to take this one pocket discipline in this first of the evening session of the Living Legends Challenge. I don't know if the four goes here or the four into the three goes. Or should he just cut the two over? I think if he just cuts the two over, it's a good shot. Yeah. You know, maybe he'll go. Well, Mike, Mike is giving his commentary on it. to shoot this, I got to hit this side of the three. That won't go in like that. If I kiss this, it don't go. I got to hit it hard enough to not leave me shot. Mike's doing a great job summing up his own options. Yeah, this is, this, he's gonna shoot the two ball. Cause he could get the cue ball almost near the side pocket on the right side of the table. If he makes it fine, if he doesn't, he's still fine. Made it all the way up and down. That was a good shot. Great shot. Not over yet. Another one coming up. And with that ball, he took the lead three to two. Oh, oh my God in heaven. He was trying to wow. find a hair. Just pop it a hair. God, oh okay, that backs it up to two to two now and gives Earl ball in hand behind the line. Earl's on the hill. Good shot at a run out. If he makes the first shot, he got a good chance to run these balls. It was like just dead eye. They all go. Except for the two, three, they all go. I don't think I can't believe I followed it. Yeah. Fucking unbelievable. Look how that ball lined up. If he pockets the one here, he breaks the two, three open, and then everything goes that he needs. That's what one pocket does to you. He's right. The one <laughs> pocket will take his stroke away for temporary. Well, that was a huge bullet Michael just dodged. Nice bank. Oh, it didn't drop. Look at this. He's surprised as I am. Drop. That's unbelievable. Wow. And once again, fortunes have turned. They both need six. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, the balls are hanging. And the drop. balls are hanging. Yeah, they are. You know what? The, 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 when it gets humid, sometimes the balls hang a little extra. Definitely gets above it. Yeah. Well, Mike's back to a three. He needs five to tie this up at two two in games. He might come around for the four ball here. Go up and around one, two, mm -hmm. three rails and around near the other side pocket. Just make sure he doesn't scratch. Yeah, that's a nice shot for the four. 
No, you can play the four, two, eleven, or whatever you want to do. He needs four. Watching Mike Siegel at the Legends, Living Legends Challenge, evaluate his options. He can shoot either ball here. He's, a, he's just got to make it. Either ball he shoots is good. Yeah. Be hard luck not to get a shot next. Nice shot. And, he, and he's on the he's on the floor, no problem. Yeah. Great speed control. Where speed was eluding him yesterday, he's. Really getting a better half feel for it today. I think the the four two gets it gets the money. Wins this rack anyway. Can't hit the one. Look, I'm not doing this. Right around the. Can't hit the one. Doesn't he know that's all he needs? I believe he has six actually. Yeah, he needs. He needs oh. two. Oh my right. Oh, is that right? Yeah, six, you're right. He does, yeah, six. Fifteen. Look at he got on the fifteen nice. Now. Oh, look at this. I didn't even see that. Even if he missed this, the balls are laying very hard for Earl to run. Okay, and for the second time, we've had the uh, players break um, broken. Uh, Mike wins game four, taking this to a hill hill match. Two games apiece and a race to three. Well, if I get off the rail, I can bump it, or if I get a little, I didn't think I could get under it that far. I'm John Bender along with Bill Hendrickson in the AccuStats production booth here at the Living Legends Challenge at the Aramith Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey. Kind of yeah, this is a big one now. This is a big one. He won the lag. See how it, yeah. it, it becomes so valuable, the lag? Except Earl, yeah. Right? Earl broke last and, and lost, and now Mike. Yeah, it's two up. They're both on the hill. Yeah. Wasn't that horrible? Wasn't that He's horrible? He did what he needed to. He covered his pocket and has balls on his side, which is the right bank. side. You know, there may be a bank on the 15 here, and I would bank the 15 and come up and hit the nine with the cue ball so that I could bank the two next. Mm -hmm. But uh, he doesn't have to do that. There's other ways to play it. That's the way to play the, play the shot, though. Come up and hit the hit the nine to stop the cue, so you don't sell out the deuce and you have it for a bank. Oh my God! Ultra conservative, no, but it worked. I don't think he could cut it enough to bank it. I think it maybe there wasn't a bank there. Maybe I thought there was a bank there, but maybe the two is in the way or something. You know. Yeah, he certainly didn't feel that there was an opportunity. Sure. Well, he's a person who likes to shoot. Mike has him buried on a stack. He turned the uh, mediocre break into a pretty good break now. A lot of players would just take a scratch right here. Uh, they would hit the left long rail and bank the cue ball uh, under the 15. You know, if you go off the 11, you may sell a 15 out. So by the way, uh, for one, the cost of one ball, you get him in a spot where he really can't make one. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, uh, 
I playing that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Mike almost considers that disrespectful to leave him a shot like that. Well, there's a little bit of a downside here. If he happens yeah. to miss this ball, that 15's a break shot. I mean, if he doesn't hit hard. Yeah. And uh, he could possibly break and run right out, you know. Yeah, also, or also Mike, a 13's a break shot. Or Mike makes this ball, gets under. Yeah, but he put it. Ball. You know, he had a, a positional disadvantage, and he turned it into a gamble anyway. Mm -hmm. I think he might play this rail first. Good chance at it. Yeah, it gives him an excellent opportunity to get to the end rail here. No, he hit it direct. He didn't hit it real far. He, he, uh, he hit he, it direct. Yeah, he yeah. hit it direct, but he didn't make it either. So how bad of a move was that for Rola, though? I just played a cue ball to follow off the two, and I follow up against the ten. Something like that. Something like that. So now he's got the balls, you know, something on his mm -hmm. side, and he didn't give up a turn. With this kind of shot here, I just banked the 15 back up into the 10, and I put the cue ball under the deuce. That was even better than my idea, because he's got the 15s loose on his side of the table now. Yeah. He cut it a little more than I would have. But he's shooting it right-handed. He couldn't get him, really. To get him on a deuce, he had a, a touch of left he needed on it. And it's hard to do when you're shooting opposite-handed. There's a lot of things to do here. I'm just going to take a, either a foul or I'm going to try to kick the, the, the nine through the hole and leave the cue ball up against the three. Mm -hmm. That's how I play. You know, if I leave it, if it's, if it's a scratch, that's fine. If I lose a ball, that's fine. But uh, I'm going to try to kick the nine and leave the cue ball on the stack. It don't have to be that, that hard, you know. If you hit it perfect, maybe it reaches the rail. If it doesn't reach the rail, so what? I get a ball over there and he has nothing to do. It might be a Varner looking at the center of the balls up table. It might be end up being a Varner game. <laughs> The old wedge. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not going to allow that, though. I mean, neither one of these players want to play a game that take that would take that long. Well, yeah, the I table's know, playing. I know one of them wants to win more, <laughs> more than the other. Yeah, but the, but the table is playing very well, and they, they have lots of opportunities to take some cha reasonable risks, and and they're taking them, which is very exciting. That was a good shot. He got it. He shot it around the one, which which had to be done. Yeah. Trying to hit that ball full. Trying to hit it full. You know, when the tables play super tight, it's it's really difficult to want to take a chance. Sure. But this table's playing just loose enough that they can they can feel free, a little bit freer, a little bit more energized. You go off the left. You know, Earl's left. It's our right side of the 15 ball. And try to put him down under the on the uh, two ball. Mm -hmm. And if you put him at the right angle, the one won't bank. Let's see what he does. He did it off the other ball. What I was just right, saying. Right, the six ball. And it, and it turned pretty sour on him because he could bank the four somehow here. I don't know what exactly he can do, but he could do something with it. In addition to maybe banking the 15. Yeah, the 15 is, you know, come back down past the one just like he did with the two yeah. ball, and he puts the cue ball all the way up at the far end of the table next to the 12, I believe, which and is in the top left corner. And maybe jacked up over the 12, which right. is even better. You're yeah, right. that's, a, that's a huge advantage for Mike if he, if he gets the cue ball Absolutely. up there. For sure. You know, he, he leaves the cue ball below the side pocket on the left after this shot, and he leaves Earl multiple opportunities to push balls towards Earl's side of the table, which in this case is the left. Yeah, it all depends on how much mm -hmm. of the four you can hit right now. You might could bank the four into the two or the four clean, put the cue ball against the five, you know, make it stop. Well, you got a lot of action. The ball to the rail. Not a lot of.
lot of that uh, Earl can do offensively here. What can he do offensively? Not much. I think what what is disturbing Mike is Earl has the opportunity to hit the cue ball any way he wants to and, and create a shot where if Earl, if Earl was sitting directly up against the rail, it greatly diminishes his opportunity. Oh, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. That, that's what Mike's yeah. so, displeasure is over. I don't know if he can hit the uh, right long rail or not. Can he get in there and hit that, you think? With the cue ball, and yes. Come back and with a little left in, which come back and roll up against the deuce. Yes. That wouldn't be a bad shot. No, not at all. We have after this um, match, which will be over at the end of this game. There will be another game, you know, commencing about 15 minutes later. We're not sure which um, discipline will be chosen for that round, but um, um, but once we have the uh, the word on that, we'll let you know. Mm-hmm. It's going to be straight ball. That was a oh. risky, risky shot. So that the six. He sure did. I don't know what kind of shot he could get next, but he's got this one. Well, neither player has pocketed a ball yet in this final game of the one pocket, except now Mike has. Now he's got the 15. Or the 14. Or, yeah. or, or, uh, or the 15, the 14, uh, even the 4, maybe. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Is it the 14? Yeah, I believe it's the 14, sorry. As Bill pointed out before, sometimes the colors are a little distorted from here. This is a great shot. He's got yeah. a chance to run out now. Which would be a good comeback. Down 2-1. Made it back to Hill Hill. He runs out here, he wins. The 9 and the 10 may be the key here. Uh, if he can get them out of the way. Or maybe he doesn't even need that. I don't know how many he needs. Well, he's got him out of the way, so that's great. Well, he has, I believe, three balls right now. Look at the monitor. Four. Spade four and shooting for four. He may have five. I'm counting. I'm counting them. Five, six. He's a two and a three. We shooting for one. Wow. Good shooting, Mike. That was the lag, you know? <laughs> well, not entirely, because they did break each other's serve once, and that's what got Mike back on the hill. I couldn't get the ball on the rail every time. It's hard to, you know, this game, you got to put the if you put the cube on the rail yeah. and it's off like this, it's a a a a, a he plays so slow of one or a hundred. You can't make a ball when you get up to shoot you because you that's the key to this game is this. He takes so this. long to shoot. Not here. That's you're frozen. Nothing. This is everything. When you finally get a shot, you can't like even play. When I powered it, I I'm trying to drive guy. through and, and get him near the red. It makes all the difference in the world. Believe me when I tell you. You can't make a ball once you, you ain't yeah, shot. Sure, one pocket, you get, you get numb. Yeah, you, this... you take so long to shoot, me. you're terrible. Do you I know how long... you again. Me? How long did he look at some shots, right? I would never play you again, believe me. No. This is it. Ooh, it's now the heat's coming out. You're one of the slowest oh, players you, I've ever you seen. You're doing the same thing on no. some shots. No. No, you're, you're, you're Tell slow. Come on, let's go to the video. Pat. You're real slow. Please. You're tremendously slow. Well, this is a different game than nine ball. Doesn't matter, I'm not that look. slow. Well, how did you like that shot where you lost the game in one shot? Did you like that? You just take so I long mean, to shoot. Go. Take so long to shoot. I'm going to play nine ball 30 minutes every shot. 